Hi there, welcome to Three Spoonies. We are your hosts, Claire, Joe and Karen. This episode 14.5, we are discussing art and creativity community questions with the wonderful Debbie Croucher. So let's get into some questions. The Activity Connector's mission is to inspire children, young people and adults alike to find the right activities for them through collaboration. We believe there's a sport or activity for everyone. We aim to bring organisations together to benefit children, young people and adults within an educational setting. If there's a particular need, we'd love to talk to you and see if we can help fill it. We're currently working with organisations around domestic abuse, county lines and mental health, first aid training and sports coaching. Do you have a hobby that makes a massive impact on you? Or are you looking for that hobby? Why not drop us a message or listen to the Power of a Hobby podcast? Always looking for more guests to come on and share what they love to do. Or do you work for a charity and want to get more exposure about what you do? Or are you looking at sports events and need more support to set them up and run them? Why not drop us a message and we can chat and see what support we can offer you. This and much more available at theactivityconnector.com. I'm Claire from Sparkles Gift Boutique. I'm Jo from Bright Cat Business Solutions. And I'm Karen from Pony Pony Pony. And we are three spoonies navigating our way through life and business with not enough spoons. So today we have the fabulous Debbie Crouch back to answer some community questions with us, but all about her art for wellness. Okay, I have a few questions for you, Debbie. The first one is from Annie. So she says, I've started doing some origami. Is it acceptable to use it like a fidget toy in a meeting if it helps me concentrate, uh, making something I know how to do, not following a pattern? I guess my answer would be yes, because I know that personally, if I've been in meetings myself, I've coloured in, I've been colouring in, and it, I've still been listening to everything that's been said, but if it helps you to concentrate and relax, then yes, I would agree. I used to get told off for doodling on everything. <laughs> I love a doodle. I can't help it. Like I got myself an A4 desk pad just so I could doodle when I was on Zoom meetings. It just helped me focus more. So I completely get where she comes from. Yeah, you've got to keep your hands busy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, when I'm using my Remarkable, I switch virtual pens so I can doodle in the margins. <laughs> <laughs> That is remarkable. That's amazing. They know their audience. <laughs> okay. Our next question is from Mac. I love using loads of colours uh, and things when I'm mind mapping. I'm thinking of using some of the lines as patterns, as a pattern uh, for some abstract art or fabric art that I can display. Is this a good idea or is it a bit pretentious? No, I think it's a good idea. If it's something that brings you happiness and it, and you enjoy doing it, then why not bring it into art and do something for yourself? I'd love to see the results when you do. <laughs> yeah, I think we all would. Sounds amazing. Definitely. And if it's fabric art, I also want to touch it, but that's a different thing. <laughs> that's a whole other topic. <laughs> <laughs> we need a PO box. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just love the idea of mind map and sort of made as a collage. <laughs> uh, anyway, our next question is from Shelley. She says, I want to create some art for our shared office. I'm not a trained artist or anything. How should I bring up the idea? I think, first of all, stop thinking that you need to be a trained artist to do art because art is about whatever's in your mind that you're putting onto paper and I, what I would say is I wanted to put something visually interesting in the office for people to look at or create something and take it in and say I'm going to put this up because it makes me feel inspired or it makes me feel happy and approach it in a different way Ask her for forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> <laughs> I do like that quote. I, I tend to live yeah. by that a lot. 
I like that. That's a good answer. Um, and I have a question from M. I have a real mental block on drawing with pencil. For some reason, for some reason, is there any other material I can use to start creating? There is, and one material I like is using um, chalks and wax crayons. Uh, with the chalks, I find that it just flows over the paper and you can just easily mix the colours. Um, and with the wax crayons, another thing that I like to do is to, you can draw a pattern on the paper and then paint it over with watercolour paint and the pattern comes out. Oh, I should say you use a white crayon, you use a white wax crayon to draw a pattern that you can't see. <laughs> And then you use the watercolour paint to go over. And, and that's a fun way to get started. I love See that idea. Messages. I was doing that as a kid. That was always fun. Mm -hmm. I love that. Okay, ladies, do you have any final questions for our lovely Debbie? It's not a question, but as she was saying about the crown, do you remember as a kid, like, you'd get coloured crowns and just kind of, paint random like cover a whole sheet of paper in it and then you just use a pencil to draw out your pattern did you ever do that joe looks like no I, think I, 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 I was struggling to hear what you said did you say crown so yeah oh. using different colored crayons oh crayons sorry yeah me, i didn't hear um and just cover a sheet in so it's all just colorful and then just using a pencil to draw your pattern over the top draw your picture on the top yes. that was always good fun and I, I loved that. I think there was another one where you used to do your crowns and then you put black over it. And, and then you get something and scratch, scratch the pattern. Yes. Oh, it's just yeah. reminded me of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can mix washing up liquid and acrylic paint, can't you, to make scratchy oh, off yes. things? Oh, it's great. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> I loved it in lockdown. A lot of the local kids did chalk art and some of them did like a little route. So it said like hop here and jump over here and spin around here. And I took a picture of it and put it on Instagram. And there was someone I was involved with a virtual craft fair. And I said, oh, this is around the corner from my house. And she said, it's around the corner from my house as well. And we found out we were like two roads away from each other. Never would have realised if it wasn't for this amazing chalk art. It's like, oh. there you go. It, honestly, it just made everyone smile. You could see people were walking along and they were like, okay, I will hop. Okay, give it a job. <laughs> yeah. right. I think lockdown brought out a lot of that creativity because you had to find things to do at home. And I remember when you could go out to the shops or do that little bit of a walk, the amount of chalk art I would see everywhere. And it was, mm. it was really nostalgic because you don't really see that anymore. So it was, that was quite nice. <laughs> And you see people where there's been a plant growing and they'll draw a design around it and they'll make the plant like a tail of an animal. And I think that's quite clever. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, yeah. I've not seen that. That's I've quite not seen that. That sounds really cool. <laughs> I'm going to look for some of that online now. It's kind of like low-key topiary, you know, if you can't. Yeah. <laughs> We've not all got a massive hedge that we can cut into a lion. I mean, I'm just speaking for myself there, but... No, I don't you know. either. I'm sure we've like... all got weeds in the cracks of the uh, garden. <laughs> yeah, but I could barely make a triangle out of that, you know. <laughs> it doesn't have the same effect, does it? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe a tiny wreath. Of one. <laughs> oh. I love how we go off topic so easily. I don't have any questions. I've, I think I've asked all mine. But it's just been fun to talk about everything. Clearly, there's lots of different ways to create, even it's all good and really nostalgic. Mm. It is. <laughs> I love it. Um, Debbie, do you want to tell us all about your book again? Because we can plug that in here and we'll share the links too. Of course, the book is all together and it's about how members have shared their artwork and it's a way to say that art supports mental wellness art supports so many different things and it's about expressing emotions um, and I really wanted to celebrate the wonderful work that members do and that's why I, I published a book and it's to say that Anybody can have a go. And it's about 
what the feelings that you get from actually doing the art. Um, so and that's that's available from Amazon, and all of the money, the profits from the book are reinvested back into the the business as well because we're a community interest company. So it's it goes towards helping other people to be able to explore the fun and the joy of creating art. I love that. That is such a lovely thing to do. So thank you so much for coming back and answering our community questions. It has been great having you. And to everyone else, thank you for joining us three spoonies on this episode of Art and Creativity in Business. We'd love to know your thoughts in the comments and any questions that you have. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe to our weekly podcast and leave us a review. You can find us on social media and we would love it if you would join us in the Business, business Success Network, the Disabled Entrepreneurs Facebook group. You can also buy us a coffee if you like what we do. All of the links that you need will be in the show notes and we will see you next week for our next topic on horror stories. Yes. Have a great day and keep track of your spoons.